ancient China, they invented a coinage system, where the coins had holes punched in them. So if you needed to measure out large denominations, you could just run a string through the center of the coins, and a particular length of string would hold a hundred or a thousand at once. But over time, the economy evolved, transactions got bigger, and merchants found themselves needing tens or hundreds of thousands of coins to complete transactions. And, of course, a strand of a thousand of these weighed about ten pounds already, so it became a real pain in the neck to transport them. So the government started saying, How about we pay you pieces of paper that have the amount of coins we owe you written on them, and you can come pick up your coins at the capital whenever you want your money. And since the government bought a lot of things, these paper slips started being circulated everywhere. Soon, merchants realized that these slips of paper were always good, that they could be turned in at the capital for however much was written on them whenever they wanted. So, heck, why even go to the trouble of turning them in? Why not just trade the slips of paper to other merchants for their goods? Thus, the merchants began using these promissory notes, or essentially government IOUs, as money. And then the government caught on and simply started printing up money. So by the time we got the travels of Marco Polo, paper money was widespread, and this idea started to catch on even outside of China. Sometimes with little success, like when Gekatu, the corrupt Ikan of the Middle East, tried to introduce paper money after he'd already splurged the royal money, and had his economy collapse to a cow plague. He basically fell prey to the misconception that simply printing money was literally a way to print money. Needless to say, he was promptly strangled with a bowstring. But sometimes, in other places, the idea started to take stronger hold, especially Italy. The Italian city-states had already been playing with this idea a little. They were the economic dynamos of Europe, and the first truly great trading cities on the continent since the ancient world. They were also basically always at war. This made carrying around great heaping piles of cash a wee bit of a danger. So the merchants came up with a new system, influenced by the tales from China. At first, they began simply issuing promissory notes, basically IOUs. Merchants would get to a new town and stock up on supplies and trade goods, but rather than carrying the cash to pay for them across dangerous country, they would just give the seller an IOU, often backed by a very famous or wealthy merchant, promising to pay for the goods at a later date. But here's the trick. To keep anybody from having to haul all that money around, the merchant wouldn't ever actually end up paying the seller directly. Instead, he would just pay a bank in his hometown. Here's how it would work. The merchant selling the goods would take the promissory note he got for them to his local bank, which he had access to, unlike most of Europe, because the Crusades had accidentally created modern banking. Why let a little crusade get in the way of a good story about fiscal instruments? So, he would take the note down to the bank and cash it in for slightly less than its face value. Basically, the bank was buying the note from him for some amount less than it was worth. Then the bank, which would have branches in other cities, would send a rider with a stack of these notes out to whatever specific city those notes had originally come from. When the rider got to the city, he would hand them to the local branch of the bank, and then the local branch would go collect from the merchant who had bought the goods. So the merchant could pay for goods in a far-off location by paying his local bank after the fact. A pretty huge step forward for commerce. But what if the bank didn't have a branch in the merchant's hometown? Well, then the bank would just sell the promissory note to another bank that did have one there. So these promissory notes sort of started to take on a value of their own. People started trading these notes, and soon the banks got in on the action and just let you take out notes from the bank itself if you had the deposits to cover it. 